Thank you very much, Eugenio and uh, Kai Ubi, for um, having the chance to present the last um, plenary lecture of the conference. Um, I have to apologize myself because I didn't look in the program, and so I decided um, the research work we are doing at the KIT, um, especially um, developing testing methods for uh, defining damping factors on membranes will be a presentation today afternoon. It would be better have it right after your presentation, but I thought it might be better to have a presentation on things I prefer to do. Things, things normally every engineer is saying you are stupid. Um, every structural engineer is saying you can't walk on a cable net. So, <laughs> I was involved uh, to developing cable nets to walk on. And I'm going back into history because I think also the engineers should know where they come from. And this is an ivory for peak cooks and close to Berlin and it's uh, now nearly 180 years old. So the cable nets coming from cages, coming from ivories or enclosures for birds in zoos or for animals in zoos. And it's a, the, the iron structure on the outside is still the original. They change, of course, the mesh. And they change the upper catenary beams from iron to steel beams. And it takes at least uh, maybe 150 years to build the next ivory for birds in the zoo in Munich. And it's done by, the architect was Jörg Geibel and engineering part had been done by Heppold and Fyoto was consultant and it was finished in 1980. And it's the same system, it's just a fence, a wire fence. And the interesting thing is that you can see they welded the strips of wire fence together and you see if you look in the summer day against the net, you see the width of the strips. Uh, ten years later then, there was an invention made by um, Thomas Fairwagner and he founded together with um, Karl Stahl a company, Officium, and I'm now a consultant for that company, responsible for the engineering part of the nets they are doing. And this is one of the first nets I had been involved. Um, this is a, a, a net for, for um, big cats, for leopards in, in the zoo of Dresden. And what you see, this net, set, this, this net has typical properties. This means it is very flexible. It can change in width and length. And the adjustment is done on site. You see on the left picture here, it's the adjustment of the cable net on site. And this is a very cost intensive uh, production and manufacturing because they start with small strips and pull it. And as you see here on the right side, um, Pulling the net, it changes its width and it changes its length, and so they adjust um, the cable net to the boundaries, boundary cable and uh, concrete boundaries. And you see here, because of the flexibility of the net, you, you have very curved directions of the cables. And the um, question is always how can you calculate that? Uh, we can't calculate it right now very precisely, so we have normally relatively high safety factors on the nets to uh, avoid uh, failures during the lifetime of the net. So now we came to the first um, net of type of, of um, uh, first structure because uh, Officium had been asked by Thomas Saraceno, he's an artist in Germany, I think he comes from Argentina. Uh, mostly interested in tension structures, and this is a, a sculpture, it's an it's a artist part, and it's in a, in a museum in Düsseldorf. Um, in, it is installed two years ago, and it's um, a three <coughs> layer net, uh, fil uh, and tensioned by these uh, air balls. And um, it, it, it is open for the public and it has a span of 35 meters in this direction and 25 meters in that direction. You can walk over it, you will see later on pictures, and it goes down 25 meters. 
So there had been several questions. The first is, is the net stable enough that people can walk on? The second question was, um, the net is normally used for birds, for monkeys, and for uh, big cats. And the question is, are human beings uh, more sensible to this type of structure compared to the animals? And what happened was, oh yeah, this is, these are the layers, these are the f uh, cables to tension the whole structure to the roof of the building underneath. This is the first layer, this is the second layer, and that's the third layer, and these bubbles you see here, they are uh, pulled up by, by the inflated uh, spheres. Okay, what happened, of course, was if people are walking or here sitting on the net, um, the net, the, the nodes had been moved. So the people, the footsteps are stronger than any type or any, any animal. And after half of a year, it happens that the whole net or parts of the net has to be um, replaced. As you see here, this is one strip of the net where it comes on site. Then you can see it here. It's rolled out, and you see here now it's already reinforced the net again. So uh, Jakob, who did the mesh, developed a new type of node and the whole structure will be replaced next year because uh, it was a really great success and um, uh, they want to have it permanently. It was decided to have it only two years, but now the museum decided to have it permanently because there are many people coming from overseas to walk over that net and it's, a, it's really a, an impressive feeling to be in, in the air and to look down and there the ground is 25 meters below. But we, our opinion is that Jak Jakob developed a new type of net, but we are thinking that I if you have a net to work on, you need another net structure. Okay, this is one of, <laughs> that's another story about the balloons. <laughs> uh, but I thought I'd talk on the net today. <laughs> so this is, you see here person, person, and you see the size of the balloon and the size of the net. And Somewhere, if you have time to go to Düsseldorf, take half of a day and go into the net. Okay, so on the other side, there's a other line from in membrane and cable net structures. There had been a co worker of Frei Otto in, in Berlin, and he's called Konrad Roland. And he wrote, I think, one of the best books on membrane structures. And what he did, he found it. Um, a company called Corocot in 1974 and he sold it in 1985 and he's now living in Hawaii, he has a good life. <laughs> but the company is still going on and the company um, is still called Corocot and it's an international company. I think it's owned now by, by a Scandinavian company and they are doing all these kind of um, structures for children playing places here type of a net um, but they are there's no there are only a few uh, analyzes on that type of net because it's for children they have now since uh, 40 years a great experience in the small size of net but architects know that type of structure and one of the architects had the idea to transfer these simple nets to double curve net also for for uh, sculpture for children playing so you can go up in the net here starting here moving up and there's a tube and you can uh, going down again. So and this was the question, is it possible to, uh, because it's in, in a city close to Stuttgart and, and the authority of the city wants to have, because it's a permanent structure, they want to have a kind of a statical analysis that it can be proved and, and it's safe for, for the next 10 or uh, 20 years. So what we did, ah yeah, the first is, how, how to ar ar arrange the, the, the cables in the net. So they are different if you have, you, you have the possibility to go parallel to the edges or you go into the main curvatures. And if you have single loads, both uh, net direction are nearly the same. The next is if you have a high point, 
which will be a better direction? Is it be uh, <coughs> orthogonal to, to the edges or is it be more diagonal to the net? To the net? And the next question was, have you to go in 90 degree or is it better to use 60 degrees? So we did several calculations. These are the results of the calculations. So it's not a drawing, it's a, a numerical simulation. And this is the, the final calculation. You see here how, how the cables are changing their curvature over the surfaces for the four layers, uh, even five layers. These are the elevations, the one in the short direction, the long direction, and the, the children can go up here and then they can <coughs> go down here. So and this is the cutting pattern. This is the 3D shape and this is the cutting pattern. We tested it coming from the uh, cutting pattern into the 3D, 3D shape because it's not a very homogeneous uh, force distribution. As you can see here, you have higher forces, lower forces. And for me, it was um, uh, yeah, satisfying that yeah, these are the detailing, very simple detailing. But we need a kind of, of improvement of the detailing, so we did tests with the cables, with the, with the connections, and um, use these results for for the analysis analysis and for um, the uh, improvement of the stresses in the cables. And next question, of course, as you see here, this is the first loading, and if you unload, you see you have a permanent um, strain. So the question was, should we take into account into the cutting pattern the permanent strain, or should we just use the length we get out of the calculation with the how yeah, approximation of the Young's modulus, and we decided not to cut it, and this was the better idea because the cable gets stiffer by the uh, nodes. Now you see it's the final, the, um, the final, you see the, the pipe going down, um, the final solution, and it's still working. And this was um, finished in last year in, in, in May, in, in April, and at that time, the, the Brazilians decided to build their pavilion for, for the Expo 2015. Uh, you see here what happens, of course. It's very flexible. Now some impressions. This is the net with the nodes. Okay, the, they decided and um, they want to have a net. The length of the building is 100 meters, the width is 15 meters. So they want to have a net of 150. 100 meter length and 50 meters width. And they asked Korokot if they can do that net. And Korokot came then to Officium, if Officium can make the engineering. And Mr. Fergler Wagner came to me and asked me, can I do the analysis for the net? So I had exactly one year ago the chance to be the structural engineer for the net. And it had to be finished in half of a year. So it was a really tight half year. The net itself has several constructional elements, of <coughs> course. These are the one for the nets itself, and this is the one for the handrail to get into the net. Um, this is the real layout of the net. This means you have, uh, um, but, uh, no, it's, it's written here. So you have uh, nodes, nearly 40, uh, 45,000 nodes along the boundary, 1,000 nodes, and the cable the length of the cable is about uh, 11,000 meters for the longer part, and the shorter part, the entrance part, is a little bit wider. Yes, yeah, so again, 30,000 nodes and um, 600 boundary nodes, and the cable length is about 8,000 meters. So this has to be, you have to number all each cable this is the original size of the mesh. It said the mesh size is about 12 centimeters by 12 centimeters. So we had to number each cable. We have to calculate the length of the cable, and we have to. And on um, for manufacturing the net, there is put on a mark at each node. So they manufactured the net by having the first layer putting on the mark, putting on the nodes, and that put on the second layer. And um, the whole net is. Um, mounted together in a factory in Berlin, and then it's transported. It, it's at about a weight of eight, uh, three tons, this one two tons. And then, then it's transported on site to Mailand in, in January uh, this year. And then the question was, of course, 
can we quilt it together and can we transport it on site and how can we bring it into the steel structure. We use there again catenary cables to pull it up and fix it along the edges. This is a few for even the longer net is nearly installed. Um, <coughs> and the tension is introduced by pulling the rings down. This is also a, a, a photo under construction. And it, this was for me, it was um, because I had been responsible for the length of the cables and I, I, but I had lectured in Casper and I was always, had always my phone on. If there's a phone call, the, length, the net is too short or it's too long, but I didn't get any phone call and everybody was happy after it was installed. These are the entrance. We, we need here double cables because the, it was um, a matter of costs, of course, that these are the connections to the rigid boundaries. This is the connection. We introduced some catenary cables to uh, bring the forces from the net to boundary cable, then the hangers, catenary cable, and then the columns of the steel structure. Uh, you see again the catenary cable, the boundary cable, and the steel structure. And the steel structure was um, designed before, so we, we have to take into account the stresses and the forces the steel structure can withstand. So the, we decided we have three different load cases. We have one load case with about 0.5 kilonewton per square meter over the whole net. We have a load of one kilonewton of an area of about uh, 20 square meter and we have then a load of about two kilonewton per, per square meter on 10 uh, me square meter or five square meter. And so the decision, decision was that it's only allowed to entrance a certain amount of person to, to the to the to the net. So this is the net and it's really like a landscaping. Still under construction. This is the way if you have enough to go over here because it's really steep. You can walk on the bridge here and you see here the part of the net. And the question of course was is the simulation we did um, we say we last but it, is it strong is it right? So the, the Italian authority authority See, decided to make a load test. This is a load test. Um, and they measured at several points, four points, they measured um, the deformation. And um, I, I put on the, the load I, know, I knew onto, onto the numerical model and calculated the deformation. That they calculated 24 centimeters at that area and I calculated 28 centimeters. So it seems that um, we, are in, we are more or less um, can trust uh, the, the numerical simulations. Now, also again, a <coughs> few of the net. Then you see here the entrance of the net. <laughs> you see uh, the, the net, the, they counted that they are moving 20,000 people a day over the net. Uh, and it's the most uh, loaded net that ever been built in, in the world. And I have uh, 10 more days, then I can sleep at night much better. <laughs> okay, and um, yes, this is just an impression at night. Thank you very much.